Welcome to another episode of Brews and Eats with Badass Peeps. My name is Judd Haley. I'm a singer, songwriter, and your host today. Today we're checking out Bad Weather Brewing, and we got our good friend George Scott McKelvey waiting inside to drink some beer with us. Join us. <laughs> You know you're in for a treat when you get to drink a beer with George Scott. Call the Minnesota home. George is a singer, songwriter, a session player, sharing the stage with musicians like Hookers and Blow and Soul Asylum. Thanks for joining us, George. My pleasure. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. It's been a long journey, Judd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Burnsville. I just had a high school reunion. That was a trip. Yeah, your tenure? <laughs> <laughs> I got chunks of tenure in my stool, Judd. <laughs> uh, no, it was, it was higher than that. <laughs> Somewhere between 10 and 40. I started playing music uh, in grade school. I played piano. I graduated to, to keyboards. I bought my first Roland Juno 60 in junior high school. Yeah. Because I wanted to play jump, Van Halen jump. <laughs> And I happened to be in a high school with a great theater program. And uh, they had a touring group called Showtime. And uh, one of my first experiences uh, playing live music uh, for people was touring prisons. Uh, and uh, a couple of maximum security prisons, which was a sort of a heady experience for a 16 year old. And I loved Willingly? It. Yeah, it was. A, I, I doubt there's no way they can get this done now. But I actually played the prison where Mike Tyson was incarcerated. I played Michigan City in the Indiana State Prison. Well, on the now, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> and my camp counselors are teaching me uh, who songs like Substitute, and I'm learning how to play Jack and Diane on acoustic guitar. And uh, and then at the same time, all this great music in the mid '80s was coming out of Minneapolis, like yeah. like Soul Asylum, right. the Replacements, and Purple Rain hit in about 19. 384, and then just living in Minneapolis and playing music, you thought, shit, maybe I have a shot at doing this and, and being successful at it. So. You actually had a stint with Soul Asylum. Yep. Are you still performing with them? I am not. Um, I sort of held uh, Tommy Stinson's place while he was in between runs with Guns N' Roses. Mm. Um, they had tryouts. John recommended me. I had done a step with Michael Bland, who's still their drummer. Um, I played an ipso facto as a guitar player. <laughs> Michael Bland, their drummer. I got a tryout. And I played kind of like Carl, because I play with a pick, and I can sing harmony, and, and uh, I got the gig. And I was the face of Embark for three years. Really? I sang all the jingles and I was I did 25 national on-screen commercials this year. Is someone there? A cell phone in The price starts low and stay whatever. He's a muttonhead. He don't want free TV. What's up, baby? Come on, muttonhead. Get your floppy on self free TV. I used to deliver graphics between advertising agencies or memos and uh, for a company called Prism Studios. Whether it was, you know, ideas for, they pitch ideas before the internet, think about it, between studios and graphic designers, they would yeah. have to run back and forth. Yeah. And then also jingles. And so I would drop off and my buddies, Tom Scott and Chris Bailey. A lot Bailey, of gas money at this point. Uh, yeah, you, you, I was you were 29 doing cents a mile or something. Like that. Wow. And um, when I had a Mazda B2000. Yeah. And I was living 26th in Blaisdell, and uh, it was, and that's right where it was. It was, it was a great gig. Yeah. 
because I got to pick my own hours, and the guy that hired me was the drummer for the phones, Brad Matson. Okay. Anyway, so I drop it off, and they're like, George, can you sing like a pirate? And I'm like, yo ho ho, it's a jingle studio. I got in and I did it, it got accepted, and uh, I was the voice, it was my Taft-Hartley exemption, and I was the voice for Toyota, the very first Toyota Highlander commercial. What? Yeah, and then they had me come in, so I was just a demo, they had me come in and do three more. Awesome, then I get a SAG exemption. And then it was Ash Spencer, then Ash and Spencer won the bidding for a little tiny movie that no one cared about with a new director called Mark Forrester. The movie is Monster's Ball. Halle Berry, Heath Ledger, you know, Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah. Won her the Oscar. They get that. Um, so I'm still doing a couple jingles and it dries up for a while. Well, Monster's Ball gets huge. Their next movie is called Finding Neverland. Uh, yeah, with uh, Johnny Depp. Yeah. And the whole movie is like a dream sequence where He's thinking about pirate songs. So they, who sings like a pirate? Yo, no, ho, ho. really? So the whole time, and then I just, they would have me in to demo pirate stuff. And then while I was there, like, hey, can you sing like Hall and Oates? I'm like, you know, Sarah Smile. Yeah, okay. Boom, boom. And I, I started, that's, that's how I, you know, and then I, I ended up doing about between 50 and 100 commercials. That's fantastic. <laughs> in the years that you've been doing this professionally full-time tell us about the one time that changed the way that you run your musical business tell us about the failing moment the moment that you went geez i'm about to throw the book in the trash i don't want to do this anymore i don't think i've had one of those moments i thought you were going to say the word entrepreneurial <laughs> which i had a gag for that because as musicians you know we can only count to four and that's a six syllable word <laughs> uh, Shit, every year about tax time is one of those moments. Okay, that's um, fair. You know, there's been a ton of them, but n none obviously enough to steer them. This is what I love to do, this is what we love to do. Um, and if, and it doesn't take a, a CPA to look at the bottom line at the end of the year and realize uh, this isn't, we're not in this for a fucking profit. Right. We're in this because it's called us, we love it, we love to do it. But I don't know if there's ever been a moment where I said, I'm not, I'm throwing away the book. We are lucky in the Minneapolis scene, the Twin Cities, to, to be able to have such a great place to call home and meet people like ourselves who do this and have a lot in common, too. I mean, we all, we all have similar backgrounds in this industry, and, and, and I think that uh, when, when you talk about like the individual show failure, that's important. I think, I think, that, I think a lot of kids who who watch this and are learning from guys like ourselves um, think that they need to be absolutely perfect when they hit the stage. Right. And this is like something that a few episodes ago Adam and I talked about, which is I can't tell you the amount of times that I fuck up in a show. Right. When somebody requests a song that I've never played before, I'm going to do it my best. I'll play you that song, but to be honest with you, I've never even heard the song, so I'm guessing right. that this is the melody. Oh, I don't do it. <laughs> you don't even do it. You'll touch it. No, I. I, you know, if there's one thing we have learned from this political yeah. climate, and what I can thank uh, Kellyanne Conway for, she has taught me how to pivot. Yeah. <laughs> we just distract and move along. Yeah. I don't know how to pivot. I just call myself the kind of broken, faulty jukebox. I will not, yeah, I will not play Sweet Caroline for free. Yeah. No, I, it's a hundred dollar song. All right, we, we just pivot. Yeah, same right. with Freebird. If you ask me to play Beyonce, yeah. we're just going to pivot. Yeah. <laughs> you can play Lauryn Hill instead? I know, I, I, I can sort of cajole and say, rather than do a song I don't know very well in a very mediocre fashion, wouldn't you rather hear me play something I know really well yeah. in an excellent fashion? Let me surprise you. Here, here can I buy you a drink? No! <laughs> I've done all those things. That's reverse income right there. Yes, but it's give, but worth it. All right, I'm going to try the wheat half a... Cheers to that. Oops. Hey. <laughs> So now we're going to get into the lightning round. At this point, I'm just going to ask you a Ooh. bunch of questions, and I just want you to answer it with the first answer that comes to your mind. Hot seat with Judd. The hot seat with Judd. That's right. Haley's hot seat. <laughs> Feel the heat in Haley's hot seat. You keep going, because I'm going to turn this into something. <laughs> okay, what was holding you back from becoming a professional musician? Small penis. 
<laughs> Wait, can I can I do that again? You can do that again. Yeah. No, I'll, we'll stick with that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, uh, perhaps uh, being I don't know, man. Nothing. You know, perhaps being disorganized. All internal. I mean, I I, uh, I didn't. I had mainly had support from my family, and I had very encouraging friends, and I feel like I had talent. So I, I, I mean, I started playing professional music at 18. Right. Um, and I started performing in front of large groups of people at 14, 15. Right. So I mean, it. You didn't really hesitate to get I'd into love the music to blame, industry. I would love to blame my mother or father. Yeah. You know, I, you know for everything, especially a small penis. Yeah. But uh, my only limitations have been. Uh, uh, self born What's the best piece of advice you've gotten in the music industry? Um, in the music industry, I don't know. Uh, one time when things were going really well for me, uh, my buddy Tom Scott, the composer, drummer, said, be aware of the power of no. You know, when we're coming up and we're hungry for gigs, there's been weeks where I'll book myself six, seven gigs in a week and, and you sort of lose picture and maybe at the end of that week you're not the best you can be. But uh, say the power of the power of no, just be okay with turning some stuff down if it's not, not the right fit for you. Um, Today's episode is brought to you in part by Patreon. Listen, music lovers, if you're loving these episodes and you're loving what we're putting out there, head over to our Patreon channel where you can support each one of these episodes and make sure that these episodes keep rolling out. What's a personal habit that contributes to your success? Uh, learned one. Um, I used to be the guy that would show up to the to the gig and I would not have the mic cord. Or uh, I would show up 10 minutes before the gig and I would I would break a string and not have one. Um, I think uh, there are habits that you can develop in the studio, but for live performance, especially if you're a bit autonomous, as we have to be um, doing the solo thing, I bring two or three of everything. Yeah, it's not the truth. And I show up early. And I peace out and I relax and I really enjoy the whole process, not just the process of performing, but the whole process of getting there on time, relaxing, making connections and, and, and setting up the gear in a way that I feel relaxed and then uh, taking a minute before the show starts so that I'm not, I'm not three minutes before showtime trying to change a fucking chain string. Dude, I totally agree. And that's totally not the agree. one you wear, that's the kids. <laughs> it's the one that you put on the guitar. Right, right. It's the fourth. All right. That is largest that, one. That's the official first G-string joke. Hey! And I have a running. I was I had a bet with somebody. Who, how long is it going to be before one of these guitar players pulls out the G-string right. joke? That's We're at the fourth episode. Great. It only <laughs> took me 20 minutes into this motherfucker to be a cliche. <laughs> You know, I, did, I was going to say D-string. I just didn't. G, there's something. G-string's better. My name starts with G, man. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> what are you currently listening to? This week's been weird. I was a huge Tom Petty fan. Yeah. So I've sort of been diving down the petty rabbit hole. I just heard Chris Koza play uh, at Lake Harriet, and he's got a new record that's just great, Rogue Valley. Um, but I'm old school, man. If, if I'm relaxing and I'm not thinking about my new songs or something I'm doing new, I, I will light a candle and put on Sade radio. Or if, I, if my sweet lady is over, it's Sade radio. Candle and some red wine, or Sunday morning. It's my, uh, it's my, you know, it's my Miles Davis slash John Coltrane mix on the Pandora. T Tom Petty is very much the current music, I think, for a lot of people right now. We, I just, my wife and I just went to uh, Chris Stapleton concert, and every one He's of great. The, every one of the openers played Tom Petty, and then and then Chris himself played Tom Petty as well. He just got off tour with Tom Petty, wow. and so I mean, what he was talking about was. I was real. Yeah, he said the last thing Tom said to him was, we got to do this again. And that was just like a couple weeks ago. Cheers to that. Chris Stapleton's one of those guys. It's like first time you hear his voice. If I was driving and I Chris Stapleton came on, I would probably drive off the road. And just either on accident or just because I'd have to listen to him. Right. 
great singer. He's a what, what is a book uh, or an online resource that you can recommend to uh, other up and coming musicians? As long as we're on the thread, I watched Tom Petty's documentary this summer, which is awesome. Um, I read a great uh, autobiography by Andy Summers, the, the, the guitar player for the police. I think it's called Long Train a Comin' or something like that. Um, that was great. Keith Richards' autobiography is great. I read a lot of crime stuff and nonfiction. It's Elmore Leonard, I highly recommend it. He writes with such economy. It's, yeah. it's almost like he's a lyricist. We, we, we were just talking about... Yeah. Punching any, Henry. Punching Henry or Punching the Clown, fantastic. Uh, I totally recommend that too. If you get an opportunity on, I think, I, I think you recommended it uh, through Amazon. I got on Amazon and it was free right now. Go watch this movie because it's very much the American version of Once, but m way more comedic relief within this thing. I can't remember, I think that Punching Henry's might be Netflix, but neither one of those monoliths is paying us a dime for this yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Tell us how we can connect with you. Thank you for asking. I have a website, www.georgescott.com. That's one T, G-E-O-R-G-E-S-C-O-T.com. Um, I'm on Facebook. You know, I play in a large, large band on weekends. I play a lot of places, but Fridays I'm at the Lone Oak Grill. Uh, for happy hour with uh, pedal steel player Joe Savage. And uh, I'm looking for a weekly on, on, on Tuesdays, but I've, I have been playing in my neighborhood at a place called Carboni's in Minneapolis. Yeah. Um, it, isn't it Carboni's? Yeah. Isn't that what I said? <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to go back to porn. Are you, <laughs> yeah. Are you doing Lee's Liquor Lounge anymore? Yeah. We played uh, Friday. That's H&B. And we're going to probably rebrand. That's um, while we loosen hookers and blow. Well, we think it's funny and the best name, and we've been going by H and B for a while. But um, we've been having internal meetings about how it's sort of normalizing um, it's prostitution not and human trafficking. I mean, I don't mind about the blow part, um, but if uh, we don't want to make light of that stuff, so we, we're going to probably rebrand. Huh. I think it's been two years that JNH has been shut down, and I'm still getting traffic. Most of, like maybe one third of my traffic is coming from the old JNH band site. Over, it's hard. I trust me, I feel you. I have a whole entire you know, other family that doesn't know about this life that I'm leading that lives in Maple Grove, and I'm still wanted under my actual real name in Georgia for tax fraud. Cheers. Feel you, brother. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me, George. Really, really, really appreciate it. Yes. You, you were as fun as I anticipated the, this to be, and I hope that we can do it again. In fact, I want to, I want the solid invite over to the house where we can listen to whatever the day's tunes are. <laughs> you, my friend, are a badass. Thanks for hanging out with us on Brews and Eats with Badass Peeps. My name is Judd Haley. This is George Scott. You can check him out at georgescott.com. In the meantime, we'll see you on the next episode of Bruising Eats with Badass Peeps. Cheers.